Hey moms and dads out there. I have a really cool experiment you can do at home and this is easy with a lot of things you should have inside your home already. So this is called elephant's toothpaste. You need some hydrogen peroxide, some Dawn dish soap, and yeast, and water. That's it. So this is super easy. What we are going to do is put a teaspoon of yeast into a cup and the cup you can't see it really but there's two there's actually one tablespoon of warm water in there you don't want the water too warm because then it will kill the yeast so a teaspoon and whoops i brought a teaspoon but didn't use it so a teaspoon so i'm going to do two of these and i want to experiment and see which will make a more awesome elephant toothpaste what I'm doing now is making sure that the yeast is dissolved in the cup. So stir it around. So while I have the yeast dissolving, I'm going to add about a half of a cup of hydrogen peroxide. And right now I have 3% hydrogen peroxide, which I got just at Walmart, I think. And if you want a more awesome explosion, you can get 6% hydrogen peroxide at a beauty salon. Anyway, I don't have it this time. I have done an experiment with 6% hydrogen peroxide and 35% hydrogen peroxide before. This experiment with the 3% is really good too. So next I'm adding a little bit of dish soap and this is going to create a bubble effect. So hydrogen peroxide is two hydrogens and two oxygens. And what we are going to do is the yeast is the catalyst and when we mix the hydrogen peroxide with the yeast, that is going to create water and oxygen. It's going to separate the molecules and that's what it's going to make. And so it's going to foam and come out. We're going to see which one explodes better. This is a six ounce bottle and this is 16 ounces. So we'll see what happens. I'll just do one more stir. I'm a little nervous. We'll see what kind of toothpaste we make. Okay, we'll move the yeast away. Three, two, one, go. And let's see. Oh, okay, well it kind of looks like milk. And whoa, whoa, this one looks a little bit, it looks a little bit cooler, I think. Whoa. Whoa, cowboy! Look at this side, it's going to go off the picnic table. I usually add some food coloring, but this time I didn't have any at home. And I was wondering if the Dawn dish soap, since it was blue, if it would have a blue tint, but I don't think so. Whoa. This is getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> this is still going, look at all that glop. It's still going and going and going. I definitely love this experiment more than just the mint toss and Coca-Cola or vinegar and baking soda. This looks like so much fun and it kind of makes me wish that I made a bigger reaction and that we could do some snow angels in it. Doesn't it look like snow? Look like a cat play. Let's see. Can you do some snow angels? Total fun. So here it is, like it's kind of like bath bubbles, probably because of the Dawn dish soap, but it does feel watery from the breaking up of the hydrogen peroxide. Ooh. Another reason why I love this experiment is it is safe for your hands when you use a 3% hydrogen peroxide, so you can play with it. Okay, look, it's still actually coming out and it's been maybe three minutes. So it's a pretty long experiment. Well, thanks for watching, and please remember to click like and subscribe. Today we'll be doing a fun Halloween experiment. It's called a Frankenstein's Hand. For this experiment, you will need three tablespoons of vinegar, a glass, two teaspoons baking soda, and a rubber glove. Here we are putting the two teaspoons of baking soda into the glove. Then you shake the baking soda around. Next, you carefully put the glove on the cup without spilling the baking soda into the cup. Now it's time to dump the baking soda into the vinegar and we can watch Frankenstein's hand move.
Now we are going to do the experiment one more time. Whoops, it looks like I didn't have the gloves secured well enough to the cup. So here's the scientific reasoning behind it, this experiment. The baking soda mixes with the vinegar, which is an acid and a base. One of the byproducts is carbon dioxide, and this increases the pressure inside the glove. The more gas that's produced, the, the, the more pressure that is it being increased. And this is what makes Frankenstein's hand move. 